On last night's homework, you were assigned uh, to write the uh, geometric structures that would result, that are predicted by Vesper theory for the chlorate series of anions. Chlorate, or for chlorate, chlorate, chlorite, hypochlorite, and I threw in there chlorine dioxide. So we start off with chlorate. Uh, what we do first is we do an accounting of how many uh, valence electrons there are in the atoms involved. Chlorine has seven, so it's a group of 17. So subtract 10 from the group number, find out how many valence electrons the atom has. There are four oxygen atoms, each with six electrons, and then you add one for the negative charge, because there's a formal charge on chlor for chlorine and ion. So a total of 32 electrons should be found in the Lewis structure for perchlorate. I drew a preliminary structure with chlorine at the center, all the oxygen atoms as satellites, and each oxygen atom got six electrons. Well, that creates formal charges on each one of the oxygen atoms, and it creates a formal charge of plus three on chlorine. So to remedy that, I move these lone pairs in to make double bonds, because chlorine is capable of accommodating expanded octets. So the final structure has double bonds between oxygen and chlorine in three cases, and then I, I preserved one negative charge on the oxygen atom because the other for chlorine anion does have, have a negative one charge. In reality, uh, this Lewis structure really represents a molecule that has seven bonds shared over four positions. So the bond character in this case is one and three quarters uh, between each chlorine and oxygen atom. What really counts when it comes to determining the geometry is how many things are attached to the central atom. There are four things attached to that central atom. So the steric number is four. And there are no lone pairs. And that four, therefore, Vesper theory predicts that the molecular geometry for chlorate is a tetrahedral. The next example is the chlorate anion. So the accounting of the electrons gives us a total of 26. Again, we do a preliminary structure with the three oxygen atoms as satellites. We end up having a formal charge of plus two on chlorine. Chlorine likes to possess seven electrons, to call them its own. And when you have lone pairs, they count as two, but bonding pairs count only as one. So this chlorine atom is only in possession of five electrons as far as it's concerned. That's why it has a formal charge of plus two. The oxygen atoms like to possess six electrons when they uh, bond. And again, the lone pairs, the lone pairs count for two, but the bonding pairs count for one. So these, each one of these oxygen atoms is in possession of seven, and that's why they each have a formal charge of negative one. If we leave the molecule drawn like this, you could argue that it is an accurate, uh, it is an accurate representation of some of the canonical structure uh, that can occur, although very momentarily. But it makes more sense to reduce the formal charges by moving in lone pairs. Again, because chlorine is able to accommodate um, expanded octets. So when we do that, it leaves a formal charge on one of the oxygen atoms, and so on. So it'll be like this. And we do need to have a formal charge of negative one on the chlorate anion. There's a lone pair in there. So the steric number ends up being four. There are four things attached to that central atom. One, two, three, and then the lone pair. And there's a one lone pair, so that means that suggests a pyramidal, a pyramidal structure, like ammonia. Sometimes people are thrown off by the fact that there are double bonds. They say, well, that, does that mean it has a steric number for each bond? No. You count how many things are attached to the central atom. And then when you have a lone pair, you also count it as though it were attached. Then we have the uh, chloride anion. 20 electrons in its uh, accounting of the Lewis structure. This is the final structure that we come up with. Notice that the, uh, initially we have uh, two lone pairs on the chlorine atom, and then we move in one of these lone pairs to reduce the formal charge on the oxygen, and we get rid of the formal charge on the chlorine. That gives this structure with two lone pairs. I, I drew them like little ghosts in this example. And so the steric number is four with two lone pairs. That suggests a bent geometry. The last one is hypochlorite anion, and there are two possible structures, although I favor um, the one where the, the negative charge is on the oxygen atom, because uh, oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine. This is also a possibility, because chlorine is fairly electronegative, but that's why I drew an equilibrium arrow showing that this is by far the preferred structure. 
there's no geometry because there's two things. Whenever you have two things, you get a linear geometry. Now the last example is uh, chlorine dioxide. <coughs> And this is a peculiar molecule because it has an unpaired electron. So it's referred to as a radical. You see radicals wherever uh, you have high temperatures. So you'll notice that radicals are generated in flames and fire. And you can have molecules that are radicals and can be stabilized depending on the structure. This molecule is not especially stable. It's a powerful oxidizing agent and uh, it's used for bleaching things. It's also a very powerful irritant for mucous membranes if you breathe it in. It's not good to breathe in. It would cause pulmonary edema. At any rate, uh, chlorine has seven electrons. Oxygen has six. There's two oxygen atoms. So there's a total of 19 electrons in this uh, molecule. So when you draw the initial structure, you end up having formal charges everywhere. But then what you do is you move in the electrons from uh, the oxygen atoms to reduce the formal charges on oxygen and you can move it in on this one as well, and you get this structure. Notice that you have that unpaired electron. Now, if you only had one unpaired electron, it would give you a bent structure. So I think it's safe to assume that you, even though you have an extra one, it's like having a second lone pair. So the steric number is still four. I put a question mark there because I'm not exactly sure of it. And there are two lone pairs. That suggests a bent geometry. The last example I threw in at the end, uh, it wasn't in your homework, but I, I gave it as an example anyway, uh, PF6 with a minus charge, phosphorus um, hexafluoride. I don't know what you would call it when it's an ion. I'll name it like a organic molecule. But anyway, there's a negative charge on the phosphorus atom. Five electrons on phosphorus, seven on chlorine, six chlorine atoms, one, electro, one extra electron for the negative charge. So 48 electrons have to be accounted for. It has a steric number of six with zero lone pairs, suggests an octahedral geometry. And um, you can see when you draw it that it has a sort of a, a square plane where the four chlorine atoms are oriented around at a 90 degree angle from each other. And then there's one oriented up and one oriented down. All the angles are 90 degrees. And be aware of the fact that these lines are not bonds. They're just their perspective lines to see the geometry of the molecule. 